All right, so today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a rebuild, but we're not allowed to make any trades at all. That's right, no trades whatsoever. The only way we can improve this team is through the draft or through free agency. So I think it's gonna be pretty difficult. I'm gonna try to find a team that's kind of like a wild card or on the cusp of being a wild card team. So we're kind of in the middle. It's not gonna be like a full blown, like starting at the bottom and trying to work our way up because that might take a while, but the no trade rebuild, I'm kind of excited about this one. If you want to see more trades like this, or not trades, you want to get, you want to see more rebuilds like this, let me know which ones you want to see in the comment section down below. Hit the like button. That's the easiest way for me to know that you guys enjoy these types of videos. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And if you guys need tickets to any sort of event, check out SeatGeek, use the code Antortiz at checkout and get yourself $20 off. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. So without any further ado, let's get into this no trade rebuild. So for this rebuild, I decided to go with the Rays because in franchise, the Red Sox and the Yankees are kind of the two teams that take over in the division and also the wild card. So I figured the Rays would be a really tough spot to work with. You also have the Astros and a couple other teams to look out for. I mean, especially when you look at the standings. I mean, you have you have the Rays, the Indians, the Twins. So those two teams are going to definitely be really solid, especially with these updated rosters. If you guys don't know which rosters I'm using, it's coming up on screen now. I'm using writing rosters. That's the username. So search under the category username writing rosters that is how you'll find the roster that i'm using so you know the indians the twins those two could be potential wild card teams the athletics might squeeze in there the angels so there's a lot of teams in the american league that i think will be very difficult to get past so i wanted to use the rays because they do have a decent team but the big thing with the rays is their bullpen is always a huge question mark jose alvarado either does really well or really poorly the same thing with diego castillo and we're not allowed to trade them if they do poorly so we're kind of in a weird spot and also they do kind of have a, a a tough spot with their budget being kind of small and when you see this they have some players with some big contracts morton snell kiermeyer some players are starting to hit arbitration some players are starting to hit um the like the point where their contracts will go up as well i mean like zunino's arbitration is probably going to be about five mil next year tommy fam same thing you got avisel garcia do you bring him back or not so there's some players here who can really cut into our budget which and then when you look at their team it's a good team but it's not an amazing team you know Kiermaier is okay Tommy Pham is a glitch in franchise Jesus Aguilar either does really really well or really poorly oops Austin Meadows is solid he'll develop Brandon Lau will develop Yandy Diaz again a player who is sometimes good but most of the time he kind of hits sits around the 250 with like 13 home runs area which isn't amazing we got Garcia Zunino and it's, it's a team that it's kind of make or break. Either they're going to do really well or really poorly. And same with the pitching staff. You're either going to get really good results or you're going to get really poor results. So right now, I don't think there's any players who would really help us out that I'd be willing to try to bring in to help us. Maybe Addison Reed is a possibility. Maybe Carson Smith. But, you know, when I'm looking through free agents to start the season, I'm not really intrigued by anybody here so i think to start it we're, we're just gonna hop straight into um the draft for season one see how things go but for the most part i'm kind of on the fence i don't know if this is gonna go really well or really poorly the more i thought about it probably should have picked a team that was a little bit higher in the draft because right now we're sitting 20th and i'm kind of regretting it because there were some names i noticed that i missed out on where i'm like man that guy would have been a really good addition so looking at the draft this was actually a name I'm glad I didn't see get picked because he was probably a player that I had my eye on the most. And he's a starting pitcher, which I think we may end up needing. Um, I know there are some really good other picks. Um, not him. Him as a shortstop, he looks really good. You move him to second base. If he's a low 60s or even a mid 60s, you move him to second base. You're already looking at a high 60s, maybe even a low 72 from the start and at 19 years old i feel like he could definitely help us out but i think that starting pitcher is going to be the one we choose just based on the fact that he's a 70 overall already and his per nines were really good i mean i i know a position player i wanted was taken so we're gonna i mean look at those per nines this guy could legit be a player that hops into the major league roster season one that he's on the roster i'm gonna go with another starter I've been thinking about this one a little bit too long. We're going to go with John Pina. I kind of wanted somebody else. Oh, they Someone took him. I wanted this guy right here. 
just based on his contacts are not that bad. His vision and discipline are really high, which no, which you mean he's going to have a good average every season. He's got good speed. I'm looking at him more as a second baseman than a center fielder, but uh, this guy probably should have went with him just because I'm not too sure that starting pitcher that we just took is uh, is going to be uh, ready to feature anytime soon. Next pick we're going to go with is Richard Wade. Good, good contact numbers, good plate vision. First baseman could be a position that we need in the future anyways. We'll take him. I'm going to go BJ Linden just by the fact that he's a lefty. I like his per nines. The control is a little low, which worries me. Sometimes that does affect sim style franchise pitchers, but I think it's not a bad little third round pick. I'm going to go Charles Sams here. One of the better available relievers. I know this guy's not going to be an 80. I know Gaylord Ridgeway is not going to be an 80. I know Gaylord Espinoza is not going to be good enough anytime soon. Um, Broderick Leal looks okay, but I'm going to go Charles Sams for sure. I'm going to go Billy Worth. We're at the point where it's just none of the picks really look that good. So we're kind of at a weird spot. So I'm looking at this. I mean, this guy's here long term. He could be a really good pickup. But I'm looking at him like, man, I don't think he's going to really help us. And we can't make any trades. So he's probably the best player available. Let's see how we did in this year's draft. So to be honest, it actually went really well. This starting pitcher, I think, is going to be huge for us. Jeffrey Rivera, 75 overall, 80 potential. What a pick at the 20th pick. We also have Jeff or John Pina, who's already 70 as well. Look at those per nines. This could be a guy who maybe season three could feature for us. This guy could even feature for us next season. Richard Wade, only 81 potentially, 60 overall. BJ Linden, what a pick. Oh, wow. 71 overall, 90 potential. So we got some pitchers who really could help us out come season three, season four. Jeffrey Rivera might be maybe like a long-term, um, like a long relief guy. Maybe a bullpen guy just based on his stamina. But overall... I'm pretty happy with the way the picks went. The last three guys are 50s. I'll still sign them, even though we're not going to be able to use them. But our top four, pretty solid. 75 overall, 70 overall. What do we got? 60 overall, a little lackluster, but he's still got really good potential. And then 71 overall with 90 potential. I like our picks. I'm looking at our final record, and I'm kind of questioning... How this how this might be a little bit tougher than I thought it was. So we went 88 and 74. So we did make the postseason. So I mean, I kind of exaggerated the fact that it might be kind of tough. But we're playing the Red Sox in the first round of the pl the playoffs. So like I mentioned, standings wise, it could be tough. We have the Red Sox, the Rays. I told you the the stuff the getting to the playoffs is not going to be an easy feat. Um, we do have a Gold Glover, no uh, no other award winners. So I did go out and I picked up Adam Libertor. From free agency I wanted another lefty in the bullpen and at the deadline day he was sitting at like a four and a half ERA so it looks like he's maybe found his stride things went a little bit better Chaz Rowe was a player I considered moving down but then I looked at some of our bullpen arms and I was like man we don't really have anybody here who I'm like 100% confident in using um, Colin Pock Poach Potch, Potch, I think it's Potch. Um, he, he's a player who could potentially feature. He was just a little bit low at the beginning of the year, so I didn't really feel comfortable using him. But I definitely could think he takes, uh, I definitely think he could take Libertor's spot next year. We got Brendan McKay, who I'm kind of looking forward to using. Charlie Martin, I think is going to sit in this long relief role. Fits him a little bit better. You know, he, as a starter, he was sitting around a 5 ERA. He was struggling this year. We got Blake Snell sitting around a 4.5 ERA. Yoni Chirinos is is solid you know low whip okay with the era strikeout numbers are iffy you know but he's not really a high strikeout guy you got glass now who's got a five plus era yarborough i mean trevor richards we swapped with charlie morton and i'm not even really sold on him and so hopefully maybe we can pick up an arm in uh, free agency that'll really strengthen our starting rotation because that's kind of our question mark right now i feel like the the starting rotation is the big question mark our bullpen yeah there was a couple iffy arms but overall i mean when you saw diego castillo's numbers those are nice low whip jose alvarado might switch with diego castillo might switch with him we'll see we'll see but let's take a look at our lineup let's see how things went daniel robertson did quite well he had nine home runs 36 rbis a 294 average and almost 400 at bats travis darno not a bad little backup catcher looks like he actually got quite a few at bats 257 14 home runs not bad for like a platoon catcher that we moved in and out we sent down eric sogard because he was hitting 
147. Um, we picked up Joey Wendell. Doesn't look like he did too much better. So we, you know, there's also Matt Duffy who we could use. We got Nate Lowe. So there, there's a couple other players that we could bring up. When we look at the rest of the team, Tommy Pham had a great year, 20 home runs, 72 RBIs, a 300 average. Jesus Aguilar, okay. I did say we may need a new first baseman, but I'd be I'd be okay bringing him back for another year. 29 home runs, 84 RBIs, a 270 average. That's pretty solid. Good year for Austin Meadows, Brandon Lau. Not bad, not bad, definitely not bad. Um, actually 250, 23 home runs is good. Good amount of RBIs. Um, strikeouts under 100, which is nice. 250 average is a little on the lower side, but good on base percentage slugging in OPS. Yandy Diaz, I kind of mentioned, yeah, around 13, <laughs> 13 home runs, um, but the average was higher than I expected. So that's that's good to see. Abisail Garcia, um, I don't know if I'll bring him back. I'll have to, actually, those are good run production numbers. 27 home runs, 36 doubles, 100 RBIs. He might be a player we have to bring back. Those That's a really good year. That's a career year for him. And then Mike Zunino. We have Travis Darno who put up really similar numbers, a better average and on-base percentage. It, it might be Travis Darno who's our catcher, or we might go pick up somebody else because there are a couple decent catchers who are available at uh, the free agency, like during free agency, I should say, not at free agency, but during free agency. When we look at our, like, like pitching staff we do have brandon mckay who could come up we do have a couple bullpen arms who could come up um michael perez is another player who's potentially could be a backup catcher so overall i mean i feel comfortable i feel like we definitely have those good pitching arms coming through the draft as well we also could make some additions in the free agency market but let's see how these this this game against the red sox goes we're gonna quick manage it it's gonna be a tough one we're away We'll have Blake Snell, who struggled this year, take the mound. So let's see. Okay, Daniel Robertson and Tommy Pham back to back. Okay. All right. So mm, that's a that's a little bummer. So we're we're only up one. Now we're down one. Blake Snell, really. Austin Meadows brings it back. Okay, I'm cool with that. That's nice to see. Then we give up the lead again. I don't think. Unfortunately, we can't trade Blake Snell. He's locked up basically for the entirety of this this rebuild. We're going to have to go to somebody else because Blake Snell didn't even make it through four innings. We're down four runs. I don't... What's going on here? Bats, Our bats went a little quiet. There we go, Yandy Diaz. Gets us within three. Can we get a couple more? Fielder's choice. Jesus Aguilar can't do much. We got Nick Anderson taking the mound. I mean, he's pitched, what, four innings now? I think he's a decent little long relief arm for us apparently. Um we'll go to we'll go to Castillo, might as well. Maybe not. Sack fly. We're down four again. <laughs> That's just Blake Snell, dude. Like, look at those first four innings. That's just And then Nick Anderson came in, held them quiet until the eighth when Castillo came in and allowed one run. So the bullpen allowed one run in five innings. Blake Snell allowed seven. That's just, oh man, he's supposed to be our ace. What are we going to do with that? And we can't trade him. So this one, Cubs defeat the Red Sox. Okay, I, this one's going to be tough. I don't want to like cut him because I feel like that's kind of dumb. Charlie Morton retired. Ooh, that actually helps us because his contract was like, what, 10 million plus? That's that's helpful. Now we got a little bit more, a little bit more cash to work with. So, hmm. I'm still not sure on any of these guys. Avisel Garcia was really good, but I want to see if there's another player who comes available because sometimes there is. There usually is like a um, like a Castellanos who could potentially maybe move into that like left field spot that maybe Tom Pham's a DH or maybe Austin Meadows is a DH. Castellanos takes over right field. I'm going to wait just a second. I do like bringing back the, or the idea of bringing back Garcia, but for right now, Let's uh, see what we can do. Um, we'll probably put Drake. Ah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave them. Um, we're going to sign um, all these guys to arbitration. I'm not. I think we have to bring back Libertor at least one more year based on how he did. And contracts wise, I think everybody's going to get it looking at this. Yeah, I think everybody's going to get one uh, just to be safe. 
and then we'll move into free agency, how, see how things go. Alrighty, heading into season two, I definitely wanted to make some pitching changes, and I also added, wanted to add another bat. So that's basically what my whole plan was for free agency. So let's take a look at pitching. So I'm going to give Trevor Rogers one more year. Um, we did sign him to like a long-term deal. Two million is not that big of a deal um, in terms of money. I'm going to see how these guys do. We do have a couple of players kind of locked up with arbitration for the next few years, which doesn't mean we have to sign them, but I'd hate to like let Tyler Glass now go if he's going to suck, you know, so especially since he's such a high rated player, but we might have to let him go and then pick up someone who we just know is going to perform better in a sim style franchise. We decided to bring in Ross Stripling for a year at 1 million. I think he's going to be fine for this long relief role, especially when we have Brendan McKay, who could potentially be ready next season. His per nines are a little low. We got Jeffrey Rivera, who I think is going to fit that long relief role really, really good next year. That's kind of why I did that like plug-in player in Ross Stripling for a year. We also do have John Pina, who his per nines are looking even better than what Brendan McKay's are. So he could even potentially be a player that we use next season. We have Chaz Rowe, Nick Anderson, Colin Potch, Libertor, Diego Castillo, and Jose Alvarado. So really the only change was Ross Stripling being added. So we just kind of have a, a player we can plug in for a season. The big addition in offseason was Anthony Rendon at third base. I figured let's just get a bat who I know is going to hit around 300. A lot of run RBIs, a lot of home runs, and I think that's going to help us out. Aguilar was brought back on arbitration. We decided to bring back Evisel Garcia just because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a player who I, you know, maybe just for a season or two. He's $5 million for a year. And I'm talking players like, Edwin Encarnacion or something where I'm going to pay like five or six million for an aging player who may or may not perform based on what Avisail Garcia did last year. I feel like he's going to give us very similar results. Um, so I just didn't want to go like full blown on like Josh Donaldson, um, Edwin Encarnacion or any like high power player who may not perform just because he's aging. So we, we got a decent squad, a good bench um, this season. I'm not too sure we'll do much better than what we did last year but i feel like we we got better um so we'll see how it goes can't make any trades so again i'll see you guys at the draft day as we head into this draft um there's a player here that i wanted so badly and it's this catcher that you're about to see mark hashimoto 23 years old 80 potential catcher this guy made me moister than an oyster look at those stats are you cr like what are you kidding me that's just nuts how do you he, he's he's this is the japanese gary sanchez right here and he went oh he went like what nine ten picks before us i was like please 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 let this guy drop and unfortunately he didn't so that kind of sucks man that would have been a great pickup for us i'm not as confident with this draft i do want to check out that that catcher so we got to find who he went to because whoa 90 potential 66 overall to be honest he's only low rated because of his fielding stats i could see him being really he's six foot five as well he is huge i could see him being a like just throw him into the majors right away who cares about the fielding he's gonna hit like crazy crazy good stats so i would just use him right away so let's take a look at our draft see how it went um no one who's close to being like MLB ready, but it's not a terrible one in terms of potential. You know, 60, 60 overall, 80 plus potential for this guy. Uh, we got 90 potential, 65 overall in our closer, and then 80 potential, 63 overall. So not terrible, but not as good as last year. Let's see how the rest of the season plays out. All right, so I said I thought we got a little bit better. And to be honest, Kind of, <laughs> not really actually. Again, we're a postseason team. This time is a, again actually as a wild card team, 92 and 70. This time we're taking on the Yankees instead of the Red Sox. Looking at the standings, we were 15 games out. So this is, it's looking like unless we get some crazy good luck, like we're the fourth ranked team in the majors. Um, you know, the Yankees are number one, the Red Sox are number three. So, you know, when I, I'm assuming the Dodgers are number two. So we're the fourth ranked team in baseball, but yet we're just barely cracking a wild card spot yikes um so league leaders batting average was rendon when we take a look at an awards silver slugger 
and a gold glove. Overall, I was kind of keeping track of if we needed to bring anybody up or send anybody down, just because I feel like that's really the only way we're going to improve our team since we can't make any trades. And offensively, we are a really solid team. Um, G-Man Choi struggled a little bit. Um, Yandy Diaz as like a bench bat platoon player sometimes swapped out at second base was really good He actually had a better year than he did last year um, Home runs RBIs and he actually played less which is kind of impressive Daniel Robertson Little bit of a disappointment may not bring him back because I feel like that money could be used somewhere else Zunino is definitely not being brought back. I actually kicked him out of the starting spot just because he was doing so poorly and You know, unfortunately, we couldn't get that really good catcher at the draft but we do have Roland, uh, Ronaldo Hernandez, who's struggling right now. We also do have Michael Perez, who's another option that we could use. And then also Travis Darno, who actually picked up his batting average a little bit. It was sitting at like 200 uh, like at the end of August. So last month, he really had a hot streak. But when you look at our lineup, Tommy Pham is starting to go down a little bit, but pretty similar to what he did last year. Rendon is, uh, is going to be a key pickup for us. I think he's really going to carry the team. Austin Meadows is only getting better. So again, we have a good bat right there. Brandon Lau is really good. That's Those are good numbers for a second baseman. He definitely needs to be our second baseman every single day. Maybe even move Yandy Diaz to that DH spot. Or I think he can play first. He might be a player we move to first. He can play first because Jesus Aguilar does have good power numbers, but I'm not too sure if I want to keep him around. Plus, again, he's starting to go down. So for me, that's something that's a little worrying. Um, Avisel Garcia, again, good home run numbers, decent RBI numbers. Um, average went down a little bit, but on base percentage and stuff was pretty similar. Willie Adamas is getting really good 20 home runs, 77 RBIs, high average on base percentage, slugging, and OPS. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the offense is. And when we looked at pitching, it actually got really good. Um, Trevor or Tyler Glass now struggled a little bit along with Trevor Richards, but our first three. We're really strong. Blake Snell had a bounce back year compared to last year. He also pitched more, so that's good to see. Ryan Yarbrough, very good, really good year. Um, and Yoni Chirinos, not too bad either. Ross Stripling, for a season, I will take that. He had a good amount of innings and it, just a decent year overall. Chaz Rowe, probably a player I'm not going to bring back. I hesitated on bringing him back in the first place, and I probably shouldn't have. Nick Anderson's another player that struggled a little bit. Um, Colin Potch or Poach Potch Potch it's Potch I've said it four times already and I've already changed it every single time Libertor not as good as last year probably gonna let him go Alvarado is just a player who's not doing well and I just I've tried him in the closer I've tried him in the setup role and it's just it's, it's just not his spot he had 12 blown saves and then Diego Castillo he might actually be our closer um, he's he's been really good for us so he might be our closer we do have a couple okay um, players that we can use here Pagan maybe um, Jalen Beeks and then when you look at these three right here I think Jeffrey Rivera would be an amazing long reliever We got Brandon McKay who could potentially hop into that fifth starter spot in place of maybe Trevor Richards Or even Tyler Glass now if he continues to suck um, and then our lineup I don't think much is gonna change. I think we've got a really strong lineup going forward so hopping into this postseason game against the Yankees again, it's gonna be a really tough matchup, but that's the way things are going to be. I wanted to have a team that it was going to be difficult to make it past any any postseason opponent. So we're going against Severino. And looking at their lineup, it actually looks the same, just Justin Smoke. So that's really the only change. Aguilar is on second. Nothing able, or like we're not able to do anything with it. One run scores, and that's, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Just one run. Bases loaded for Meadows. Unfortunately, not able to take advantage of it. So first and second, no outs. We need, there we go, Willie Adamas, a player I'm actually pretty fond of in real life. I think he's going to be a great shortstop for the Rays in the future. Can we bring in more? Yes, four to one. So we're looking pretty solid. And double play ends the inning. Blake Snell's having a great game compared to his last outing. Do we go seven though? A triple. If this run comes in, I think we're, we're going to take him out. Just to be safe, we're going to go to... Eighth inning, I don't feel safe throwing in a, a lefty. We're going to go to Anderson. Switch hitting smoke. And just like that, we give up the lead in the, ah, the seventh. Ah, man, I just didn't feel comfortable going to who we had in the pen. Bases are loaded. A fly out. Can we get the sack fly at least? We can't. He strikes out. Bases loaded, no outs, and we can't score. Nick Anderson 
does what he needs to there but what happened in the last inning a double pop up a fly out and the runner was thrown out at going home and we lose five to four i i just didn't feel comfortable going to diego castillo at that moment and especially going righty righty with sanchez and then obviously smokes a switch hitter so whoever we would have put in it would have been you know favorable to smoke but i just didn't feel comfortable no it would have been alvarado that we put in because he's the lefty i just didn't feel comfortable you know bringing him in the lineup with the way he pitched this year and i mean Libertor is not really strong. I guess we could have gone Potch, but I don't know. I feel like it was a tricky spot, and unfortunately, it just didn't pan out for us. And Nick Anderson was really clutch in the postseason last year, so I felt like maybe he would have been the one to go to. Red Sox end up winning the World Series. Man, that's a tough one to lose. That, that was a tough one to lose for sure, but oh well. So maybe we should have left in... Uh, Blake Snell, I'm, I I don't know. So, I don't feel comfortable bringing any of these catchers back. They were pretty atrocious this year. Um, Travis Darno wasn't terrible, but just, I mean, I feel like we, we have a couple prospects that we can bring up. Avisel Garcia, not as good as last year, so we'll hold off. We need to basically get a whole new staff, but let's move forward, look at contracts and everything, and see what we can do there. Arbitration. It won't be Stripling. We're gonna we're gonna bring up one of our rookies. Roe is not gonna get it. Um, how did Matt Duffy do? Oh, he didn't even play for us last year. Mm, how did Robertson do? He didn't he didn't do as great. So we're gonna let Duffy take over for Robinson. I think that's the move, and that's really gonna be the only. Oh, we're not gonna give a uh, Libertor arbitration either, and then we're gonna give everybody a contract. So in the off season, first like two going into three i feel like we've made a lot of good changes offensively i think we've gotten stronger um the bullpen was an, a little bit of an issue last year and i feel like we, we plugged some gaps there and then the starting rotation is untouched so let's kind of let's kind of take a look at what we did so like i said the starting rotation is left untouched it's kind of a make or break year for trevor richards and ryan yarborough both have actually not yarborough where is he glass now i feel like glass now is kind of at the point where I may not bring him back if he does poorly. Um, Yarborough did very well for us last year. And then Trevor Richards, it's been kind of lackluster. So I feel like we got we got a solid one, two, three. It's just the four and five is kind of questionable. And we have plenty of prospects who could fill that gap. And we also brought up Jeffrey Rivera, who I think is going to be decent in this long relief role. We have Potch, Beeks, Anderson, Alvarado, Castillo, and a big closer and Blake Trinan I think is going to be perfect to fill that gap because Alvarado was not the guy that we need in that closer spot he's just too many blown saves ERA is too high I'm just not really sold on him so maybe in the setup role as a lefty specialist he'll be a little bit better but for now this is how our bullpen's looking I feel pretty confident in the way you know what we did in the offseason going into the lineup we got really strong Tommy Pham's our DH we brought in the freight train David Peralta. We also brought in JT Real Muto and then Carlos Santana. I'm going to move the lineup around a little bit just because I don't know if Kiermaier is really the guy I want leading off. I may even put Tommy Pham there. Actually, no, I'm going to... Mm, there's a lot of different players we could put here. Maybe Brandon Lau and then we go something like that. I mean, there's just so, so many good bats now that I feel like we're... Like, what do we do? I feel like we've got a really, really strong lineup, so... Overall, I'm pretty excited to see how the season goes. Offensively, I think we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Pitching-wise, again, I feel like we're pretty strong. You know, going into the season, we're the second-ranked team in the majors. So I don't, I don't see why we shouldn't be making a really, really strong push for the World Series this year. So let's see how things play out. Um, I'm kind of excited to see how this team plays out. So season three, let's get on with it. All right, I think this might be the year. We actually look really solid. And when you see our record, we're 100 and then 62. We won the division, so we're taking on the winner of the wild card game. So we're actually going to lose um, first round. So let's take a look. League leaders, most walks for Tommy Pham and strikeouts for Blake Snell, which makes me think he's going to win Cy Young. Actually, he doesn't. Gold glove. So who won Cy Young? Chris Sale for three straight years. Let's take a look. Let's see how our bullpen did. They brought up Trevor Richards, which I don't like. He's been, ooh, Nick Anderson too. Diego Castillo had a really bad second half. He had a two ERA in the first half of the season. So up until the deadline, he had like a 2.86. So his ERA really fell apart. 
um, in the second half of the season. Jose Alvarado is actually having a, a pretty decent year. Um, so that's not bad. But it's looking like some some arms didn't really work for us. So Pagan is a four ERA. We definitely changed some players. Like Jeffrey Rivera was struggling a little bit. So we brought him down. Um, Brendan McKay was brought up. You guys can see he's about the same as what Jeffrey Rivera was doing. I don't want Trevor Richards up. He's just... He's just a liability. So I'm going to see if I can get maybe who would I call up Pagan or would I call up Jeffrey Rivera and put him in the long relief role. So let me, let me think about this really quick. Actually, I think, yeah, we, we'll do that. We'll pull up Jeffrey Rivera for the long relief role. We'll go, we'll go a little crazy with it. See how he does. In the postseason, we'll send down Trevor Richards. I just don't have um, faith in him at all. I think he's done with the squad. It's just this is how we're going to look for the postseason. So you guys can kind of see how the bullpen did. Overall, I'm a little disappointed. Um, but let's see how Blake Trinan did. Eight blown saves. So about what he did last year. So the ERA went up a little bit. Blake Snell had a really good year. Ryan Yarbrough, again, very, very solid. ERA went up a little bit, but again, the whip's low, and I think he, you know, still pretty solid numbers. Chirinos, yikes. Okay, Glasnow, again, another player I'm just not confident in, and then McKay, so we may have to look to add some new new uh, starting pitchers to the squad. Looking at our bench, Yandy Diaz, again, very consistent off the bench. I like this, bat, this bench bat. I think he's going to be a huge addition to the squad. Matt Duffy, high on base percentage guy decent ops as well 838 um he had 143 at bats and then franco is uh 248 so not bad limited appearances as well and as you guys can see it's looking like our squad's putting up a lot of home runs good amount of rbis you know 28 27 29 30 22 20 he hit 300 i think this is like the best i've ever seen jt realmuto do in a franchise where i just simmed everything he also had 38 doubles okay um carlos santana hit 310 with 36 home runs he definitely needs to be moved up in the lineup i think he is for the most part except for this lineup um and then we got kiermaier who actually hit 278 and 268 for willie adamas so offensively very very comfortable pitching wise i feel like this was our worst year which is a little worrisome we're taking on the royals i like this matchup a little bit they beat the Angels, really, so no one, Ooh, wow, the Yankees and the Red Sox really fell off, and then the Blue Jays also were in second, so, I mean, this has got to be our year, I'm looking at our opponents, unless the Royals are like some super team all of a sudden, I feel like we should win this, and we do, we sweep them, okay, so, and we're taking on the Indians, which actually, this, this could be a tough, this could be a tough one for sure, but we're going to move everybody accordingly, so that we don't get um screwed pitching wise and let's let's see how this goes we win the first win the second lose the third win the fourth come on win this one there we go we're in the world series and we're taking on the nationals so we should just be able to go straight to blake snell for this one who's pitching yarborough so we swap them he goes there how does torino's doing struggling a little bit i'm gonna give brandon mckay an opportunity and then we'll put Chirinos as the fourth and Glasnow as the fifth. Um, actually, how's Jeffrey Rivera doing? Not great. Not great. So we'll we'll leave it there. Game one against the Nationals. Ooh, we take a loss. 12 or 7 to 12. All right, we get a win. And another win. And another win. So this is for the World Series. I saw Blake Snell got roughed up a little bit in game one. But I, I feel confident. Actually, he's kind of tired. Do we do it? I feel like we kind of we'll do it we'll do it i know it may not be the smartest idea but we're gonna see how it goes can we get an early run that would be huge double play oh man looking at their lineup they got voight grandal tommy la Stella. those are new additions to the squad a walk okay one run scores on the triple by real muto i don't know if he's gonna get the run and he doesn't but brandon Lau does and we take a two nothing lead here in the second this is this is good for us double play though that's not good Strasburg with their only hit first and second for Snell he moves them over Brandon Lau can't be clutch once again so again we're still looking good Peralta the freight train with a double one out Carlos Santana strikes out and then JT Real Muto hits into a fielder's choice so so far so good only two hits allowed through five 
bringing in Brad Brock. If this is like real life Brad Brock, we're in for a treat. It's not. All right. Unfortunately, again, another good outing for Snell here. And I'm kind of tempted to take him out here. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to go to Diego Castillo. Double play. That was huge. Good single there. Kiermaier walks. We're going to pinch hit. We got the righty on. So maybe, my, do we have a switch hitter? He only hits lefties well. So is there anyone that, we're going to go to Diaz. I feel confident. Oh, man. And then we're going to go to eighth inning. Righty, lefty, righty. You know what? I'll give Alvarado the shot. Man. I think we have to go to Trinan here. One run scores, and he gets us out of it. So it's going to be a four-pitch save for Trinan. He's, he's got to deliver for us. A double. Can we get an insurance run? We don't. Come on. No. All right. To the 10th we go. Uh, we're going to pinch hit. Um, Tommy Pham. Grounds out. Man, this, this one sucks. Um, facing lefties. Hmm. I guess Beaks. Single, single. A walk. Really? Are we really going to throw this one away? Rev <sighs> Man. All right. We still have two games to play with, which is, you know, a good, comfortable, like, lead. But still, man, that's unfortunate. So Corbin versus Yarbrough. Yeah, we're going to do it. 3-2 to two lead in the series. A run scores, obviously. Why wouldn't it? You know, this is when we all fall apart and things go poorly. First and second, no outs. And then we nothing happens out of that. Really? Oh, man. There we go, Austin Meadows. That's what I want to see. Lefty, lefty crime. Gets us that two-run lead. First and second, no outs. Or, no, it's actually a one-run lead because they did score. Ooh, there we go. Now we have a three-run lead. That's That was nice. That's what I want to see. Um, Yarbrough is probably only going to give us maybe six. Yeah, six. Mm, I really don't want to take him out, but we're going to take him out. One run scores. One run scores. Tie ball game. God, man, are you serious? That can't. Oh, no, it's no. We did have a three run lead. Man, I'm all over the place. We have a one run lead still. Okay, cool. A double play. That's not what we want, man. A double, a walk, switch hitting Grandal. They take the lead. <sighs> Just unreal. Brandon Lau, thank you. you. You're coming in clutch for me here. Lefty, boom. Perfect. That was that was what we needed from Alvarado. I like to see that. A walk. First and third with no outs. Please get the sack fly in. Now we got a two-run lead. I'm a little bit more comfortable. Heading into the ninth, we're going to go to Trinan. And one, two... Three, the Rays win the World Series with no trades. Unreal stuff. So let's take a look at the awards. MVP for the playoffs was Carlos Santana. And then Tommy Pham with three home runs, six RBIs, and a 533 average in the World Series. It's clutch. And then we look at the postseason. Carlos Santana was a great pickup for us. Amazing pickup for us. 100%. So let's take a look at the lineup. On the bench, Yandy Diaz was our key bench bat, and he was impressive. 417, two home runs, seven RBIs. He really made it count when we needed him. And that was really about it. Um, everybody else got sporadic, like five other at bats, but Yandy Diaz was the key man. And then when you look at our squad, I mean, it was these two were okay. Um, David Peralta was okay as well, um, but it really was Carlos Santana. He was the key, the key player. Team, Turns out he was the, the piece that we needed, apparently. Um, when we look at our pitching staff, Yarbrough wasn't bad. McKay was really good through his 11 innings pitch. Chirinos struggled a little bit this year. Glasnow struggled a bit. And then Blake Snell was really solid in 31 and two-thirds. Jeffrey Rivera didn't pan out to be the guy I was hoping he was. But Nick Anderson was decent. Jalen Beeks was okay. Alvarado struggled in three and a third. Um, but he was key. In that, that last game, he was really clutch when we needed him to be. Diego Castillo was good in five and a third. And then Blake Trinan did his job. Overall, I'm pretty impressed that we won this with no trades. I think maybe we need to do no trades in rebuilds going forward because things actually went pretty well. We actually won a World Series, which doesn't happen too often. But that's, guys, that's going to wrap it up. That's going to be the no trade 
rebuild. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. We're so close to 15,000 subscribers. Let's try to hit that. You know, that'd be awesome. Plus, I kind of have something in the works for you guys. Once we hit that mark, I'll show you what it is. And that's really going to end it, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.